And with that, let's welcome on Terrell Brandon, former Cavs guard, legend, shooting extraordinaire to the show. We figured out the tech issues, and now here's there our guy he from is. California. What's up, Terrell? Hey, what's up, man? How you doing, man? Terrell, well, we'd be doing better if the Cavs hadn't played like such garbage for the last uh, week. Were you, were you surprised how poorly they played against the Knicks? Yeah, I'm a little disappointed. Um, I think it's a it's a great learning experience uh, for us, though, because, um, you know, with Donovan coming in for the first time and uh, getting his feet wet, it was good to see him um, injury-free during the playoffs because I know he's had some some challenges in Utah in the past. And then our, our big man, I think that, you know, that, that was some great experience for our big man to, and Allen and Mobley to be able to get that experience. Um, naturally, he may have to get in the weight room a little bit, but yeah. um, overall, I think, you know, with Garland and everybody, keep everybody together, keep your spirits up. We have a great coach, uh, but, you know, we have some work to do. Terrell, do you follow the Cavs closely? And I guess you played for a couple teams, Minnesota, right? Cleveland, who do you most identify with in your playing time? Um, well, personally, I'm, I'm a Cavalier to my heart. And so uh, and that will never change. I think it depends on how old you are. Uh, some people, you know, who are younger see me as more of a, a Timberwolf to some. Uh, and, and my time in Milwaukee was just very brief, only a yeah. year and some change. But uh, my years, you know, it's like your first kiss. I'm a, I'm a Cleveland Cavalier, and uh, that's what most people look at me as. You know, Terrell, like, I, I remember, you know, it was a weird era, like uh, the, the Cavs era where, you know, they go to Gund Arena, right? They got the cream sickle uniform. See, a lot of people don't like them. Listen, to me, I love the cream sickle uniforms. Oh, Y'all, that I was crazy. Him. I got a shooting shirt. I said, listen, I got to get that off. I like, like him, too. I like I'm those, man. Um, you all came, you came up after Mark Price and it was crazy because, you know, you, we had Price and, you know, we had Elo and Doherty and all those guys. And then you was kind of the second generation of point guard. And I, I just remember when you was playing in, in that time period, going against the Bulls and some of those other teams, it was like, you became the guy. Like you, you just, it's just like, okay, Terrell Brandon, this guy, you made an all-star team. How, how was that trying to make your, your stamp on the roster after some of the, the glory days, the 80s, and, and, and moving into the, uh, into the 90s? I mean, that's a perfect question. I love that. Uh, coming into, um, you know, I got drafted in 91, and it was, it was intimidating. You know, you have Mark Price, Larry Nance, Brad Doherty, John Hot Rod Williams, Winston Bennett. Craig Elo, John Battle, Coach Steve Kerr, you know, all these veterans. And and um, I'm trying to figure out how exactly I'm going to fit in. And uh, Coach Lenny Wilkins, he really gave me the blueprint early on. It was like, what you did in college was nice, but coming here, this is what I want. I want you to look at the uh, the, the, the score. And when if, if we're up five points, then when I take you out, I want to be up at least five points. It wasn't about how many points I scored in that quarter. So he taught me about possessions. He taught me about being a pro. And once I got my opportunity, you know, trying to replace Mark Price, it was not easy. You know, from the fans' perspective, you know, Mark Price was, he's a great. And so uh, Coach Lindy, Coach uh, Mark, uh, 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 excuse me, Coach uh, Mike Fratello and uh, Mr. Wayne Emery, they saw something in me and, and felt like I was ready. And I uh, got my opportunity. And once I made the all-star team that first year, mm -hmm. I got my opportunity. I think that's when the media and the, the, the fans, they really embraced me and said, okay, this this little kid ready. And I, and I, it was, yeah, yeah. And, and, and everybody saw me when I came up. I wasn't, uh, I didn't get traded. So I came in as a young buck and was behind Mark Price every year showing what I could do, trying to be the best backup point guard in the league. Bro, you, um, when you did get traded, and that was like a, it was like a 10 player trade or whatever, Sean Kemp, and obviously there's a lot of guys involved in that trade. What was your, like at the time, what was your reaction to it? What, did, what were you thinking? Because you had been an all-star, you know? I was hurt. I was hurt. I was hurt. I got the call and I had been going to work out the gun arena that's coming from Richfield 
So I know all the tradition. I'm going through it, and I'm going through my seventh year in the league, and I get a call, and it says, uh, Terrell, this is Wayne, and I have a friend and a family member in Cleveland, Wayne Bender. So I said, well, what's up, Wayne? What's going on? And he said, no, this is Wayne Emery. I said, Mr. Emery? And he said, yes. And he said, I have Coach Mike Fratello and Mr. Gunn on the phone, and, you know, my antennas go up. And they said, it's been a trade. And the first thing I said was, okay, um, where am I going? And they said, you know, Ben Baker and uh, Sherman Douglas is going from Milwaukee to Seattle. And you and Tyrone Hill is going from Cleveland to Milwaukee. And then when he said Sean Kemp is going from Seattle to Cleveland, that kind of took the sting out of it. Because I'm like, okay, at least I can say for the rest of my life, I got traded for a superstar. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't hating. You heard what, who he was coming back. You say, I ain't tripping. Look, that's the rain yeah. man. At the time, at the time, for respectfully, real. that was the, the deal. <laughs> Absolutely. What's that like as a player, though? Like, are you driving your car? It's a regular day, and then your entire life gets turned upside down in one phone call. It's wild because now, remember, I've been in Cleveland for six years, so I have a lot of things accumulated in my apartment. And all of a sudden, it changes so fast from, okay, what am I going to do? I have two or three weeks to go from Cleveland to Milwaukee uh, before training camp. I have to leave the next day you know, to take a physical in Milwaukee and then come back to Cleveland and then I have to talk to my realtors and pay up rent and then have my family come down and take care of everything. You know, I have piranhas in in my spot and everything, so I got to oh, wow. make sure that they're taken care of and then now I have to get accumulation of clothes, but I'm living in a hotel because, you know, I don't know anything about Milwaukee yet. So all these factors and, you know, my car and what am I going to do with my truck and I need something to you know, get from A to B. It happens so fast, and you really have to just slow down and organize and really, really get you, get your life in perspective in a real short amount of time. Because Milwaukee, they want me there in training camp playing with Ray Allen and the big dog, and I got to get myself together. You had piranhas in your apartment? Wait, the tiger wouldn't fit? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of piranhas as a pet. I had two of them in there. <laughs> Just two small ones. It was like about a handful. That's all. <laughs> used to feed them goldfish. What, you used to feed them goldfish? Is that what you said? Absolutely. And just wow. watch them eat? Like, what was... Now, now I'm fascinated, Terrell. <laughs> like, like, you got you to gotta walk me through the uh, whole process. Hey, check us out. My late mom, rest in peace, my mom, Charlotte Brandon. She hated it. When she came and saw me, I put the goldfish in. I turned the lights off. And she said, oh, that is so pretty. Those goldfish are so pretty, son. I said, yes. And then she saw the piranhas was, was ate like, like like the head and left the tail. She said, oh, my God. I said, oh, throw you out. She didn't like that after that. She was like, uh -uh, get <laughs> Oh, my goodness. You know, you know, Terrell, like, I, like, I would, I, I'll be watching these little shows and it, and it talks about how good pro players are, right? And and like they they go and say, okay, like they have Brian Scalabrini, right? Um, former uh, Boston Celtics. He'll go play like regular guys that are in the gym. And Brian Scalabrini looks like the second coming of Akeem Olajuwon. He won't miss. He's blocking their shots. Um, if you were to play right now, right? Um, would you still dominate in pickup games? Do you play often, or do you you find runs and, and places to go now uh, playing against regular guys? No, no, not at all. I haven't played in <laughs> 23 years. Wow, <laughs> two, three years. Wow. I could imagine, imagine y'all, for real, going out and playing for fun. You know, I haven't played for fun since I was in the second grade. Mm. You know, yeah. I had a goal in mind, and so... To go out and like, uh, some people say just go shoot some hoops. I don't know what that means. <laughs> so you know, I had you know I retired for a reason. I had four surgeries on my knees, so I'm almost 53 years old. I don't need to be out there trying to, you know, <laughs> go back to memory. Yeah, yeah. Right. I hear that. You know what I'm saying, yeah. but if, if I even tried to go out right now and play, I'll go back to when I 
was playing with Kevin Garnett. And I can't do that. Right. So I might as well just leave it watch. Yeah. Interesting. Knowing your limits, right, as you get older. Terrell, um, getting back to the current team and the current Cavs, obviously we're all going crazy. We're frustrated and, and we're, what do we do? What, do they fire the coach? Do they change the team? What do you think the Cavs should do? I mean, obviously, even if, even if you believe we're overreacting, there are some things that need to be done. The bench is not good enough. It's going to be challenging. But uh, in terms of their four top players, Garland, Mitchell, Mobley, Allen, would you make any changes there? Or would you stick with those four and try to change the rest of the group? Yeah, I would stick with those four. Absolutely. I mean, they're all young. You know, they seem like they're all coachable. And that's what you need in young players that's getting better. You need them to be coachable. If they're not that coachable, then, you know, you might as well get rid, rid of them. And I don't know any of them personally, but, you know, I watch them, in, you know, from a distance. And all of them seem like they're nice young men, keep the core. But anytime you lose, particularly in the first round, there has to be some changes, you know. And I think shot selection has to be emphasized a lot, particularly in the playoffs, which I, I feel that because we're so young that we can learn from that. We can, you know, the team can watch film and say, you know, once we get in this position again, because if you want to be a great team, you would have been a playoff contention team every year, you will get into the same position again. Once we get in this position again, that's be more confident. The Cavs, we turned down a lot of shots that fourth quarter as well. A lot of good shots. And sometimes that can become from mental fatigue. You know what I'm saying? Because it's yeah. a long season. We can learn from that. Right. Go ahead, Jay. I'm just curious what you think of today's game and the way it's such a different game than when you played. I looked real quick. You were about a 35, 36% three-point shooter in your career. How would you have fared in today's game? Shoot. I probably would have shot 10 threes. Yep. <laughs> yep. You know, I was talking to someone today. I, I was actually uh, watching um, Golden State last night, and uh, one of Clay Thompson's, he hit that clutch um, jump shot in the corner. And I said, wow, when we played, that would have been the, a terrible, great shot. You know? Yeah. The, the, the times have changed. And they didn't emphasize the three pointer as much as they use that they do now. Of course, they called them marksmen back when in the eighties and nineties, like a Chuck Person or a Dell Ellis, someone you know, or Hershey Hawkins, guys who really Mark Price, guys who really shot those. Now there's a lot of players shooting threes. You know, even on you know three on two, two on one, fast break, they're stopping at the three point line. And they're firing up. So if I was playing right now, I would put more emphasis on the three-point line. That's for sure. Was it ever considered a bad shot? I'm just curious. Like, did you ever get yelled at for taking threes? Did coaches ever view that as a bad shot? You talking about myself? Yeah, just that during your playing days. Did coaches in, of that era, because now it's all layups and threes. But did back then, I'm just wondering if coaches, because I really don't know the answer, did coaches view the three-point shot as a bad shot? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. It was a bad shot. But then what happened was with me, um, in 94, 95, I believe, they moved the three-point line in. Mm. And so when they moved it in, coaches couldn't emphasize it being a bad shot. Now it's right. you know, 18, 19 feet. So coaches had to kind of renege on what they were saying. <laughs> wow. All right, Mike, you got a quickie before we wrap up? I got one, one yeah, more. Yeah, I got yeah. one quick one for you. As a, you know, former point guard. Say it again, Terrell. Y'all got me up early, man. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this, is, this is a good question here, yeah. I promise. As a, you know, former point guard, you got a chance to run with a lot of elite players and elite shooters. And a point guard's main goal is to be able to pick out who's open and who's got the best shot when and where. Of us four, looking on the panel, who do you think is the best shooter oh out of us God. four? I mean, really going to ask that guy. question? Yes. Um. I mean, uh, come on now. Mm, None of us can mm, shoot. Mm. I can't shoot. Uh, I'm You're giving shoot. it away. I'm sorry. So all y'all admit that you're can't shoot now. Well, I so, can't. Uh, like, oh. <laughs> That's the point guard's job. Um, this is what he does. This, this is what a, he did for a This is a, a trick living. question, Terrell. There's a reason he's asking you, know, you. Okay, check this out. All of you, raise your hand right now. 
See, the way you raise your hand, I'll pick my man in the middle. G. Bush. G. G. Bush. You know, I, I, I play. I think Mike, I'm you hurt. think you're a better shooter than Mikey? It actually hurts my ego. Uh, he, probably, he probably definitely oh. shoots better than me now. Yeah, oh. far, Mike. Long so, long. you know what I'm saying? The, ans- the answer is Mikey. He Every t- opportunity, he yeah. wants to tell everyone that he played Division three college ball. He yeah. did play higher, oh, higher that- level than me. I, I only yeah. played I only played Division one basketball. I just, like, I just think I exuberate this energy of, like, an elite shooter. So, you I was just make up a on word? the West Coast, <laughs> you can still feel it. You, now, you just made up a word. Now, exuberate's exuberate? a real word? That's not a word. And the, the Cavs, back in the day, they had, listen, they had, they you know, Mark Price, Steve Kerr can knock it down. Heck, Kevin Johnson back in the day can knock it down. Uh, Craig Elo used to be able to shoot. So the Cavs had some ball yeah. players coming off the bench like that really could really knock it down a little bit back then. Well, Mikey, clearly game doesn't always recognize game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> I'm hurt. It's okay, though, Terrell. Hey, Terrell, okay. let me, I'm going to give you some rapid fires. You, you pick the winner, okay? You ready? Okay. Bill Russell or Will Chamberlain? Pause. That's impossible. You stumped him. Will Chamberlain. Woo. Hakeem Olajuwon, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. <sighs> <laughs> Magic. Magic. Yes. Mark Price, John Stockton. Mark Price, definitely. Got to go with your guy. Yeah. LeBron or MJ? MJ. See, he's from he's from that era. He's from that era. He he don't he didn't even hesitate. He's just like he was ready. He knew he was coming on here. Yeah. He was like, yeah, they're gonna ask me about that. I'm I'm ready for all the smoke. All the (laughs) listen can't be his guy. Austin, them old the OGs. Yeah. OGs don't be playing. Come on, man. Y'all don't understand how it was, young blood, back back then. Well. They hand I'm checking. old enough, man. Listen, <laughs> I, Terrell, I'm no good at basketball at all. I was never good as a kid. Obviously, I'm fat. You know, I wasn't as I wasn't fat as a kid, but I was never <laughs> good at basketball. But I grew up in the in New York City, and I would watch the good players play in like the New York City courts. I'd go to Manhattan. We'd go to all these cool courts to watch some of these guys, these street ballers play, and they were awesome. And in New York, no blood, no foul. Now these guys, they cry about everything now, Terrell. Everything they're crying, they're looking for a foul. I totally agree. I was just yeah. on uh, um, a series with uh, Rick Mahorn yeah. this past weekend, and we talked about it. And I said, man, I remember when, you know, they knock you down and the opponent never picked you up. They didn't yeah. call favorite ones for fouls. You know, uh, Bill Ambert dislocated my shoulder, and uh, Coach Lenny Wilkins called a 20-second timeout. <laughs> they popped it back. <laughs> Line and shot two free throws. <laughs> The game was I'm to like, me I'm in the back, like you know, like no, just pop it back and <laughs> let's go. Man, to me, the get NBA was the best, like '80s and '90s. That's the best NBA yeah. for me. Yeah, I mean, there was so between yeah. between the 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 you know, obviously you guys had a great team, the Pistons, uh, the the Celtics, the Lakers, the 76ers. I mean, and then the, eventually the Rockets and the Bulls, and and even even to the to that Knicks heat rivalry, which was nasty. The Pacers, you know, like it, 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 there was so many great rivalries. And now it's just, I don't know. I mean, the NBA is still good. I just don't like it as much because I like paint, you know, guys beating the crap out of each other, hard fouls, not being all friendly. Like I, I miss the, the old school post players, right? Like I, and now everybody shoots the ball. I want to see some guys battling in the paint. I don't get that. What was that voice? Yeah. I totally agree. You know, I, I wish that, you know, maybe uh, Mr. Alan Silver can just go and say, listen, because he's from that era. Yeah. I remember him when he was a, a general back in the day with uh, Mr. Stern. And he understands where us former players and people like you is coming from. Yeah. That's why Draymond Green and people are so drawn back by that style. But people like us, man, you know, you got to have somebody on your team that the elevator don't go to the top floor. You gotta <laughs> have at least one. <laughs> Our foul, yeah. it, it works. You know, yeah. It works. I think I think those those Patrick Ewing Knicks teams, they had a lot of players that elevator did not go to the top of the floor. I mean, they had some bad dudes. 
They were fun to watch. Anthony Oakley and all those guys, they was crazy. Yeah. Anthony Mason's elevator is out of order. Yeah, he was. He, he took was, the stairs. He was, he put, but I tell you what, he would have kicked that. He gave everything to get every rebound. Yep. He got every inch out of the, out of his talent. Because I don't know how, how talented he was, but, man, he got every ounce of talent that yep. he could possibly get. Anyway, yep. I'm reminiscing too much about the old Wait, wait, Terrell, yeah. I got one more serious question. Yeah. Did you play with Bill Curley in Minnesota in 98, I played with him for about, um, I think it was about a year or so, yes. That's my college coach. Cool dude. Good dude. You got any good Curley what? stories? Yeah. Oh, man, Curly was real cool, man. He was just real quiet and real reserved. And you know, we got along extremely well. It, it, was, it was nothing controversial about him at all. Nothing. Who was the best trash talker you played against? Definitely not Curly. <laughs> uh, Larry Bird. That's Everybody a, says that. That's, yeah. that's He's the, the GOAT. The fourth He's the best trash talker that. ever. He is the GOAT of trash talkers, Bird. So, like – so what was the fun? Like, did he say anything to you? Like, he, was he funny? Was he mean? Like, what, what did he do? I was surprised because this particular time, Price was out, and I was starting against the Celtics. Yeah. And he was killing us. And he said, um, hey, Rook, tell Coach Lenny Wilkins why he got this white kid, Craig Elo, guarding me. You better put a brother on me. And I said, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Offended. He's offended. <laughs> I want to say, you know, remember you white, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> nah, he wasn't. He's the most black white dude ever played in the oh NBA. Oh my god, that is so funny. <laughs> Man, he, he he was a legend for real. And he let us know I'm gonna go over here with two point one seconds. I'm gonna go like this, shoot back, you know that yep. that little yep. vocal little jumper he had. And he'll tell you exactly where he's going to hit it, and then he'll hit it, and he'll walk off. If you see some tapes, a lot of people was always jumping on him when he would uh, make last second shots, but everybody was surprised but him. Hmm. Yeah, that's amazing, Terrell. We appreciate it, man. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for getting up early. We'll talk to you again soon, man. Be well. All right, you too. Anytime. Thank you. All right, man.